Hello there folks and welcome back to some more ELU MC videos. Uh, right off the bat I guess I want to sidetrack and ramble a bit about something other than what you see behind you which is probably why you clicked on this video. But it has been a while since I've uploaded anything um, and I guess I should sort of offer some sort of excuse and it's rather simple actually. Over the past um, two or three months I've gone through the process of buying and moving into a new place and Panguino and I I've not really had a lot of time to collaborate on any videos. I haven't even had time for myself to do videos on my own. It's just sort of been a very busy process, and uh, that's sort of kept me away from doing videos. And obviously this channel is just getting started. There's really not much of an audience. I do have a number of day jobs. <laughs> um, actually, only two. Whatever. It's not important. The uh, important thing is, is I actually do have other things I need to get done, so I had to kind of make those a priority and sort of neglect these videos in this channel for a little bit of time but i still do really want to make these videos and i think it's going to be fun especially for um, not only our server but just fun in general i think to kind of uh keep looking into more redstone stuff i i enjoy it that's obviously why i'm doing it so anyways let's talk about what's behind me here now i've really been thinking about a best way to give this or the best name to give this thing because i wasn't able to really come across someone else's version of this, which I would assume there is because it's it's a fairly useful contraption, at least I would assume it is. But every time I tried to search for it with names that I think I would give it, I wasn't really finding something that was relevant to it. So um, what I'm calling this thing is a sequenced redstone circuit activator, meaning that let's say you have a number of different redstone circuits that have to be fired in sequence, this is what this thing will do. So let's whip around here and get this thing going and see what it does. So here you have it. Uh, this version of it is entirely buildable within survival mode. And I wanted to show this off because we did mention this in our kick the bucket series um, that you could build this in survival mode. So I figured it was only fair that I show you how, at least how I would do it. Um, so you're seeing a number of command blocks here and I just want to say right off the bat, ignore them. They're only what I use to build this and represent the outputs of, uh, of the circuit. So. I'm going to go ahead and push this button that's going to start it and every six seconds or so we're going to get a different output. So we have output one and then after about six seconds we're going to get the second output to fire. There it goes. That's output two. And then after six seconds we'll get the next one. There it is. So this is being controlled by the hopper clocks and the hopper clocks are only allowed to fire once and they're transferring 16 items back and forth and once they transfer 16 items um, they're allowed to let the next one uh, transfer the next 16 items and then you get the next output so this keeps on going and the outputs um, I guess regrettably at this point um, fire on opposite sides each time you run a sequence so it kind of zigzags back and forth but for now it's reasonable I haven't gone through much effort to try to build this in any different configuration I would like to try to take advantage of vertical space and maybe fold this back and forth up and down um, so that it, it, you can compact it a little bit more, maybe come up with an entirely vertical version of it, and maybe just a few other configurations. I'm not entirely sure how you might want to build this. Um, but this is mainly just to show the mechanism of it um, functioning. So let's go into a little bit more detail showing how each one of these sections work. So there's basically a triggering torch in each one of these that allows it to start. Really what it's doing is it's preventing the hopper clock from just running automatically and you're waiting for some sort of momentary shutoff to allow the uh, hopper clock to at least cycle once. So we've got this redstone torch and that's what's preventing this thing from operating right now because it's keeping this piston extended. So as long as this piston is extended then this hopper is not allowed to push items out of it. So the redstone's here, the items are here, and it's being prevented from pushing any items out of it. So this comparator block is off, this comparator block is on, there's none in this one. That's basically the configuration here. Um, and since we have power coming out of this one, then we have uh, no output coming out of this section, which goes on to hit the next um, triggering uh, redstone torch, if that makes sense. So what happens when it does get triggered is this redstone torch turns off for a moment. And since it turns off for a moment, uh, it means for a moment this will become unpowered, uh, which means this one will become powered and will get the output. And uh, once this all, all becomes unpowered, basically you'll get this piston to extend, push the redstone block over here. When that, that means this one will not be allowed to push, but it means that this one will be allowed to push. So that means that the items will come, all the items will come out of this hopper and go into this one when this piece of redstone switches sides. 
So, as they're coming into this one, then you get this thing to refire, um, resupply the power here. So you, the, that, that's basically what allows this thing to just blink on for a, a split second. And then we basically are waiting on this thing to become unpowered. So since there are items in here, we're waiting for this to empty. So we're waiting the amount of time it would take for 16 items to transfer out of a hopper. So when this whole thing gets activated, then we have um, the items flowing out of the hopper. So this would be, um, the, the basically, hoppers transfer at a rate of uh, one item every four redstone ticks or one item every eight game ticks. In actual units of time, that means that an item is transfer transferred every four tenths of a second. So 16 times four tenths of a second gives you basically 6.4 seconds. And you might have to add a few more because of the comparator blocks and the pistons except extending. So it's basically somewhere between six and seven seconds between each one of these. If you wanted to lessen that amount of time, you could greatly reduce it by just putting in one. And I've just gone ahead and sequenced the whole thing. I just triggered it there. Uh, but you could just have it be uh, one block there instead of 16. So that's how you'd adjust the time between each one of these. And obviously that means that with each section, you could vary the amount of time. If you wanted to have three of these happen every six seconds, then one of them happen every 10 seconds, uh, happen after 10 seconds, then one of them happen immediately after that one, and then another one happen after 10 minutes or something like that. Um, you obviously do have an upper bound by the total number of items that you can get inside the, the, uh, the hopper here. That would be 64 times five times 0.4 seconds. That would be the total amount of time that you can allow this hopper um, this sequencer to um, prevent an output basically before the next output has to happen. Um, so you could in theory maybe build a version of a hopper clock within there that takes a little bit longer somehow. Totally up to you. Um, I've come up with other contraptions. They get a little bit complicated at that point. But hopefully you don't have anything that really requires this many outputs. But in theory you could extend this even in this sort of bizarre um, one-dimensional <laughs> uh, construction. You can extend this, I believe, as far as the loaded chunks go. I, I believe it, it all depends on, on how redstone behaves outside of loaded chunks. It may work, it may not. I don't think it does. Uh, that's my hunch. So I think you can go at least 200 blocks in each direction with this. That's why I would ultimately like to come up with a version that does take advantage of vertical space. So that's how you'd build a survival version. Um, you, it, the output does zigzag from one side to the other, but, uh, you know, maybe you guys can tinker with it. I'll just leave that up to you. Now, if you're a map maker, you're not going to want to build this. This is kind of a, a really excessive and introduces redstone lag and a lot of other ridiculous things. So what you want to do instead is build this version of a, <clears throat> what do we call it? A sequenced redstone circuit activator. Basically what we have here are 10 hoppers, and there's one piece of stone or one item in here to be transferred around each one of these hoppers. Um, and then we change the pace at which that uh, item is being transferred at by utilizing the transfer cooldown time uh, within the block data itself. So every time one, an item flows into a hopper, uh, the comparator block triggers a set of uh, command blocks. The command blocks will either give you the output or they will give you um, and they will also give you the transfer cooldown time that's actually necessary. So the reason this section here is made of stone is because if you put a command block here and, and needed another command block to be next to it, um, it would actually trigger this block and trigger this one. Um, but you get no uh, quasi-connectivity through this. So you get basically this block to become powered, which will power these two uh, command blocks and nothing more. And then when the next one uh, gets powered, then it powers these two command blocks and nothing more. So this is just to prevent any sort of entanglement and have multiple outputs spit out when you don't want them to. So you can see when I release this lever and let this thing go through, you'll see that it's moving through at a much slower pace than it would ordinarily do if we didn't have the transfer cooldown time operating. But we're still getting 10 separate outputs in sequence. So in order to explain this, we kind of need to look a little bit more closely at the block data and command and look at the transfer cooldown time. So the question really is, what are the units for this value? We have 16, 16 what? So we need to explain that, right? Well, I believe I mentioned it before, the default transfer cooldown time of a hopper is four redstone ticks or eight game ticks. So what that equates to in seconds would be 1.2 seconds 
or 1200 milliseconds or something like that. Um, or you could reduce it to, I, I think it's um, deciseconds or something like that. You could do 120 of those or something like that. Um, so you could experiment with those sort of values and, and try to play with it. And maybe you'd find that when you enter in 12, you get something close to default um, transfer cooldown time, but it's still a little bit longer. So then you start to move to the idea that maybe this value um, that we see in these blocks is actually being represented in redstone ticks or game ticks. So the next idea is to try to use the values 4 or 8 as the default transfer cooldown time, because what we're going to try to do here is basically what, I'm, what I've already done. We want to have these default hoppers um, output at the same pace that these transfer cooldown hoppers are, are at. So what I've discovered is when you put in 4 or 8 in these things, 4 moves too quickly and 8 moves too slowly. So why does it move too slowly when it's 8? Why does it move too quickly when it's 4? Well, to answer that question, let's look at what I found out it actually was. When I enter in 6 for the transfer cooldown time, I actually get the default behavior. So why is it 6 and not 8 or 4? Well, the reason is is that as this hopper or as the item comes through and the hopper receives the item, it takes an extra two game ticks or one redstone tick for this comparator block to turn on. So you're adding basically an additional uh, two game ticks to the amount of time that it takes for this whole thing to fire because it's gonna the item's gonna come into the hopper and it's going to want to wait a total of eight game ticks in this hop in this hopper. But after two game ticks, it's going to trigger um, our comparator block over here. Now, if we just left it on its lonesome, it would go on its own by after eight game ticks, and we'd completely ignore this. But when this um, command block gets fired, it's going to change the time to six game ticks. Now, we've already had two game ticks pass, so it's the equivalent of allowing eight game ticks to pass. So. What does this mean to you? Well, it means that when you go to make a decision on how long you want this item or this output to last for, then you need to basically convert that, that amount of time into game ticks and then subtract two game ticks because that's how long it takes for the comparator block to light up. So, in other words, if you want an output to happen once every 10 seconds, what you'd want to do is take 10 seconds, multiply that by the number of game ticks within each second so you would get 10 times 20 and you get 200 game ticks. So 200 game ticks is equal to 10 seconds. So we want it to last for 200 game ticks, but we have to subtract the two game ticks that it takes for the comparator block to turn on. So what it ends up being is 200 minus two, which equals 198. So if we wanted this to last 10 seconds, we do 198. So if I change this one here, what I'm gonna get is I'm gonna get default behavior for the first nine and then 10 seconds on the last output. There you go. So that's 10 seconds. So there you go, guys. I hope that helps. Um, obviously, the real point of this was to demonstrate this survival version of it, but hopefully I helped you guys out with a little bit more of the information about the command blocks over there with the block data. Um, so hopefully you guys have a better understanding how you'd want to use this. Again, all I can think of to call it is a sequenced redstone circuit activator. And I'll catch you guys next time uh, for more videos. And maybe I'll return to this at a later date and maybe try to figure out a different configuration for it. I guess I'll leave you guys with a little tidbit of information that Panguino and I are looking to uh, get back to our Kick the Bucket series. I'm trying to get back into a few more of my video series, and I'm trying to... Uh, um, basically steer it more towards the bigger projects. Uh, I've got a general mob farm and an ender farm that I think could be kind of interesting. They're they're different than what most people do. They're not necessarily any better, but, um, you know, sometimes it's just nice to see something different, someone else's uh, way of doing things. So that's what I'm going to put those up. I'm going to put those up at some point. Not really sure when. But they'll be on their way. And I'll catch you guys next time. Later.